since the undeniable success of the last video, 10 or 20 views or so, I'm now on a quest for content. So rather than just skipping over the grinding stuff, I thought I'd go over some of the tools that I use. Basically with grinding, you ever have like a big grinding job on on a car where you can do shit loads. What you're gonna do is you, you're gonna think there's like a magic tool that does it and you'll go out and buy that. So every time you, you do a new big task, you'll get a new tool. So I've got loads of tools. First go to, obviously, is uh, is the old angle grinder. Um, always always get a Makita angle grinder. There's no other ones. This is the this is the second one I've got. The cable was the only thing that broke on the on the first one that lasted for ten years. It's actually it's actually here. Bluetooth. So I just need to get a new cable and then I can do the old um, wire brush grinding disc lark. What you want to use this with is one of these grinding discs. No, there's nothing better really for initially if you've got a flat surface and you've got you've got a weld you want to get rid of, maybe you you know crap welder or something. To go over perpendicular with one of these is great. You'll just you'll just flatten it out. The problem is, if you go over with a flat wheel like that, it it'll, it'll never go flat. It will smooth the metal either side of it. Get it flat with that first, then get a flat wheel. It's great, and you'll get a nice smooth finish. If you've got a flat surface and you've got a bit of room, you can't beat that really. Uh, right. These little these little air files are pretty shit in my experience. It was one of those where I needed to do a grinding job, needed to go out and get something. So I got this and it was absolutely terrible for the whole time I used it. Recently someone told me to get these 3M purple jobbies. It's alright. If you can only get to it with that, then that's the best tool that you can have. Otherwise it's pretty much a complete waste of time. These belts cost an absolute fortune and last for about two minutes, but this is good to have around, right? These, so die grinders, you just associate with porting out heads and things like that, but it's actually pretty useful. But you do need some really good, uh, you do need some high quality burrs for it. So I've got these, I got them years ago thinking I was gonna build race engines for a living, but never did anything. I think I half built a flow bench in someone's unit and then moved out of there. You just have to be careful with it jumping around because you can end up going straight through bits of sheet metal and like rattling. But if you go gentle, it's good. Um, it, it uses a lot of air. So unless you've got a big compressor, um, it's, it's just a, a no-no. But it's, it's good. Uh, this one I got recently for this job actually, because I wasn't looking forward to it. You always see people who are pros with these, so I thought I'd pick one up, because then I'd be a professional fabricator. Came with a load of different bits to put on the end of it. So you got you got kind of your normal grit stuff, and then um, got some of these jobbies, it's like a really arsy scotch. I guess that'll, I'm about to take those of paint off, so I'll, I'll let you know what that's like, but uh, it's pretty good. And they're all Rolox which means you've got like a, means you can't get it off, which means you've got like a, a little fitting like that and it's just, it's really good. It uses, again, it uses a lot of air, but for linishing little bits, it's really, really good. And apparently for TIG welding aluminium, if you get 3M scotch pads for these, then it's pretty hard to beat. So then in terms of using grinders to take, take a load of paint off as well, um, these guys are, I think that's these guys are pretty good. I never used to like them because I used to think that it, it would wear the metal down and go really thin. But it only does that if you press really hard or if, or if you're trying to get into like a groove or something. It's great at taking paint off is just shit. You just have to deal with it and get on with it. But these are really good. The only issue is when they do start to wear out, they're just made of knives basically. And it spins at 12,500 RPM max. And when it starts to wear out, these come out. And I was, I was using this recently on there. Um, and my friend was using the face shield that you have to use for these and one of these came out and went straight through my septum so I, I recommend them but only when all this is over and you can get a face shield really and then for the, for the bits that you can't normally get to these are good, these just go in a drill if, if you need to get in gaps or something like that, then that'll go down there without ruining all your metal. 
and then you know just just random bits there'll always be places that you, you can't get to and you're there afraid scraping it with a little pin or something yeah these are good that's it really you just gotta get on with it it's just a shit job right i've got a fair amount done on here i don't think i summed it up well in the last video so all of the, all of these were were holes everywhere they've all been filled up so the job for today is to do the interior seam welding and there isn't actually that much that I haven't kind of done so across on this cross member we, we've got to do across there we've got to do around here we've got to do around this hole in the tunnel for the gearbox and then we've got to do along these along these seams all of these ones on the group A cars they were they were done the other side so we don't need to do that until we flip the car over and it's the it's the same along here they weren't done from the inside they were done from the outside so we'll just copy that the thing to look out for with, with doing stuff like this is just get it as clean as you can with the with the wire brushes that I was on about. I'll try not to fuck up the GoPro this time and I might put it behind a mask as well because I, I always watch watch videos and I like to see how people are trying to trying to weld stuff because this is a bit different to butt weld like this. This we're trying to get a bit more strength and heat into. So I'm going to try and put it behind a mask and then in doing that I'll probably find out why other people don't do it I guess. I can see why people don't do this because it's a massive pain in the ass to set things up. So I don't even know if that mask worked. I'm even blind, so I guess it does. So I'm just going to seam weld these two bits together. The idea behind stitch welding is to add some rigidity back in compared to running only with spot welds. What you don't want to do is run a weld across your entire seam because otherwise the, the uh, engine bay of your M3 will just crack and warp. So you just want to do 15 mil a stitch and then maybe an inch or so of gap. You can pretty much just vibe it. If it's a really kind of showy area and you want it to be nice, then you can, you can mark it with some welding pencils or something and get it dead on. If you've got a load of it to do, you're better off just vibing it and seeing how it goes. What I do is, is I do a little kind of ease just to pull both bits of material into the pool. When I set the MIG up, I moved all of the knobs around by accident, so I don't really know how this will go, but I'm not setting the camera up again. that for you are you happy under there it doesn't look that shit setting up this was a real pain in the ass so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up the camera just in the car maybe put it on a time lapse and then i'll just run through and do all the weldings and we'll do it super quick this time i'm not going to let my ass hang out of my trousers so i can actually use the video footage down here that needs cleaning up some wire brushes as well as just in the edge I've got around here so I'll probably nick one of my mate's hook tools and try and get some more out I thought it was clean but it wasn't if it only takes five minutes to clean something up it's it's worth doing I think eight minutes is my cutoff and then it's it's not really worth it anymore you may as well just try and weld over the top of the dirt these are the uh, hook tools Snap on boys, they're pretty good. I've only broken one of them so far out of four, but they replace them for free, don't they? And they're not mine, so my mate replaces them for free. It's 
sometimes I think which side I'm going to be sat. And then if I if I think, oh, well, I won't be able to see it from the driver's seat, then I, I usually do a fairly terrible job of it. But all the stuff that I can see, which I won't actually do properly. Done. It actually came out less shit than I thought it was going to be. I thought down these seams it was going to be really difficult. It actually welded up quite nicely. These ones are all welded up nice, tied in nicely. This was dickhead. I um I didn't take the gear lever off when I tried to pull the engine and gearbox out. Idiot. I, was, I wrote down that I, I was going to do seam welding in the um in the boot, but then I looked in there and I can't imagine when they're building the group A shells they would have done it. Um. If anyone wants to build a group A shell, then I, I have to kind of get everything from books like this that are in, um, I mean, pretty much entirely in, in Japanese. And there's only a few good books, really. There's, there's this one. There's um, a small one this big that's white. So I don't know what any of them are called. And that's about it. Uh, I've got the homologation papers, and it's got a copy in the back. But in terms of kind of getting t tiny bits accurate, this is this is all you've really got to go on. But at the moment, I'm happy that all of the stitch welding is exactly as they would have done it. The boot was the bit that was kind of stressing me out. I haven't, I haven't really got any photos apart from the underside photo. Right, let me try and explain this situation. I think the only section that they did was just this small section around here. I think just just for me, knowing that it's done, I think I'm just gonna put a little seam around there. But to do it, um, you can see there's a, there's a small gap down here. So if I try and weld across, I mean, it'll just look shit, won't it? So I'm gonna drop off the rear coilovers. Does anyone else's spanners look like that? If you do inlet manifold gaskets on one of these, with the engine in the car, you'll need about 30 12 mil spanners and you'll have to bend all of them like that. I recommend not using heat and then snapping as many as you can. This is when you realise something isn't Nissan when it's got a 13 mil nut on it. I don't own any ratchet spanners, so I don't know whose this is. Let me know if it's yours. What do I reckon, 17 or 19? Place your bets. Is it two 17s? I've only got one of each at the moment, so. Always put your nuts back where they were, then you'd have to put them in little bags. Oh yeah. Arguably a significant list of things I should have done before putting this roll cable in. This would be when you get loads of smoke it means you cleaned it really well it's like a little reward for cleaning it so well i like all the world tutorial videos that people do where they say oh you have to make sure you're comfortable and fuck off jesus Believe it or not, I am actually quite happy with that. So I'll leave it there for today. I don't know whether to go over all the... I'll be spraying it soon. So I'm not, I'm not gonna go over everything with etch primer yet. So yeah, see you tomorrow afternoon, I think.